Welcome to the I Choose Health Podcast. I'm your host, Stephen Lessing. Today, we have model, actor, and advocate Matthew Carter joining us on the show. It's very important as you hold on to that dream. There are moments when you're going to doubt yourself. There are rough times that are going to come, but they have not come to stay. They have come to pass. It's very important for you to know that. Don't say I'm having a bad day. Say I'm having a character building day. It's very important for you to believe that you are the one to make this happen. I remember just starting to part off with some positive energy from motivational speaker Les Brown. We're sharing that clip from our sister YouTube channel, Growth Inspired. And there we share inspirational messages for you from different motivational speakers around the world. Now, for some health updates. This first study is coming out of the University College of London, and it says that any activity is better for your heart than sitting. It says, replacing sitting with as little as a few minutes of moderate exercise a day tangibly improves heart health, according to new research from University College of London and the University of Sydney. This next study is coming out of the University of Granada in Spain and it's saying that scientists are showing for the first time how many steps it takes each day to reduce the risk of premature death. And they're stating that it's going to be about 8,000, which is equivalent to walking 6.4 kilometers. This international study led by the University of Granada has provided a first scientific proof for how many steps you need to take per day to significantly reduce the risk of premature death, 8,000. Given the average length of a human stride, 76 centimeters for men and 67 centimeters for women, taking 8,000 steps is equivalent to walking approximately 6.4 kilometers a day. Researchers have also shown that the pace at which we walk has additional benefits and that it is better to walk fast than slow. With regard to the risk of dying from cardiovascular disease, most of the benefits are seen at around 7,000 steps. Now, let's get into the interview. All right, guys, welcome back to the I Choose Health podcast. I'm your host, Stefan Lessie. We're back for episode two. Uh, last week, the episode with Honoré was amazing. Uh, You know, we got to go into his life and, uh, you know, see his journey, his health journey and his journey as an R&B artist. Um, And today, you know, I'm really excited for who we have. But before we get into that intro, before we get into who we're going to speak to today, you know, there was a song that was playing on my mind. And uh, there's a song called All Day Praising You by uh, Billy Gaines. Now, he's an old an old gospel singer from the 80s and 90s. And, you know, I really wanted to get that played here in the studio, but, you know, I was having some technical difficulties. But it's, you know, our next guest is definitely someone who's really keeping the praise front and center, right? And if you've seen his lives, you know what I'm talking about. He really brings that encouragement, really brings that inspiration. And, you know, without further ado, I'm going to introduce it. Ladies and gentlemen, we have model, actor, dancer, instructor, producer, director, advocate, and entrepreneur. And might I add, chair specialist. If you've had a chance to view his live videos, you've seen him try to encourage and empower people at the start of the day. He's a founder of the nonprofit organization of Real Desire that helps to manage and develop performing artists especially those who lack the resources to pursue their dreams. His inspiring and true story films, War Angel, The Awakening, and War Angel, Inner Demon Secrets, revealed to have won multiple awards and inspired many, including myself. He continues to work to help and develop and create a safe space for LGBTQ plus artists through his work and his life. 
He continues to remain strong in his faith despite his challenges, and I'm excited for him to delve deeper into his experiences and insights in the show. He's also here showing us what fit and healthy looks like after 40. All right. Audience, please help me welcome Matthew Carter to the show. Thank you so much for having me. It's such an honor and a pleasure to be here. Uh, it's definitely a pleasure to have you. And, you know, we, we want to kind of go back to, you know, Daytona, Florida, you know, where you were born, where mm. you grew up. Uh, and, well. you know, you know, you see that you were born to, you know, Gene Grant Miley and David Lee Carter II. And that you, you said from early that you shared a love for the arts since your childhood. Now, what was yes. it, whether it was a play, a painting, or a movie that created this deep love in you for the arts? Could you maybe share with us what, what that was, if there was one thing? I honestly don't know what inspired it. You know how when you're a child, you just have a love for something and then you just want to express it. So that's how it was for me. And I was I was able to actually get the chance to express that in third grade for a, uh, a play that we did for Christmas. And I, I played just the, the Christmas elf that came out to let, you know, Santa know that something was happening on the roof. And, you know, <laughs> I, I was a little anxious, but at the same time, it was, I, I think that's what really kind of got me going a little bit more because that adrenaline rush is something that I found that I really, really loved. And also the response from the audience as well. So it was just something I enjoyed doing and the re reaction I would get from people and the smiles that I would see on their face, it just, it's still something in me to, to, to move forward in that. And it's always great to find that early because I remember when I was like eight or nine, I think for me, there was like a love for history. And, you know, I attended Hunter College and did my major in history. And now I'm a personal trainer. So life is funny, right? The life is funny the way things work out. But I've all, I still have that love for history. And, you know, watch out, guys. I'm probably going to create some content, some historical content pretty soon. Who knows? But uh, it's always good to find that passion early and, you know, to really still have that love for it, you know, as you go into your adult years. And, yeah. you know, as I was reading your bio, you know, I'm just going to quote this text. You said, I've always wanted others to see me as a work of art in pictures and in person. This was the breaking point for me. And soon it began to really stir up and create more of a desire to become a famous model. Now, how important was it for you as a young black boy to see yourself portrayed in a positive light, especially, you know, in media spaces? It, it was ex extremely important. And I, I will kind of back up a little bit with what I was saying in regards to uh, me being uh, inspired to pursue acting at a young age. I kind of got discouraged by a lot of people in the church that I was attending. So I had these people telling me that I couldn't pursue that as a dream because I was destined to be a pastor. And, you know, they were telling me that for me to pursue an acting career was to pursue a lie. And I was living a lie and I would be destined for hell. And it was a lot of doom and destruction that was spoken to me in regards to me chasing after that dream. So I, I let it go and I, I stopped attending that particular church. And I just started to to watch the actions of the people and also listen to the words. And I noticed that it didn't align. So I can I continue to kind of started pursuing that dream again. And then I started, you know, as I prayed and talked to God about things, I said, you know, I, I don't seem to have that particular role model in my life. So let me be that for other people. And that's when I started to, to just want to see myself as a work of art and just move forward in that direction. And, you know, this is not to dogpile on the church because, you know, I, you know, I grew up Christian as well. You know, I still identify as Christian, but, you know, too often it's been the case where, you know, in the church you hear uh, people stated how they were told by the pastors that, you know, they shouldn't pursue this thing. I've, I've heard Tank, uh, you know, RB artist Tank uh, state before that uh, his pastor told him, you know, I hope you fail, you know, uh, like, because, you know, Tank started out as a gospel artist. And, right. uh, and, you know, it's just so often that the church is, is often telling people like, well, you know, you're not supposed to pursue this. This is what you're supposed to do. But then we're also told like to cherish a personal relationship with God and with Christ. And, you know, if it's personal, then we have to know 
what God is telling us personally to do. So, you know, it's good that the church probably has our best interests at heart, but, you know, is this what God wants us to do? And so, you know, I think sometimes it's really important for the church to kind of take a step back uh, and, you know, really allow people to experience and, uh, you know, let their talents come forward, you know? And so, Correct. yeah. And, and that's kind of, I don't mean to cut you off, but that's another reason, that, that's something else I should say that played a part in me wanting to be a, a, a not just a piece of, uh, seen as uh, art, but the role model and everything else, because it's not every church, you know, the, and which which I found was, was the good thing. And it brought it to my attention to just be aware of the people in the church, because unfortunately, a lot of people or some people, um, they don't really speak to your life what God has said to them. They speak into your life of what they want for you. And they don't actually try to take into account or just even resonate on what you want. They just seem to just put their their dreams and aspirations on what they want you to be. And that that was a big mistake. And it can be very detrimental to, to someone because you're you're cutting off what could be a blessing for somebody else to allow them to pursue a dream that God has put into their heart. Uh, that's really true. And tell me first about your experience at uh, First St. Peter AME in Stone Mountain, Georgia, and your dance and drama ministry. Is this where you derived like the mind work? Yeah, and this was actually one of the churches that really helped me to see and understand. It's so many things that transpired at this particular church. I mean, I saw the miming thing for the first time and I was like, this is something I, I feel like I actually want to engage in. And I just did it. And because of the way I did it and the way it was healing people, they ended up making me the director over the dance and drama ministry, which I fought against at first. And I was telling the pastor, I don't think you want me to be the president of that. He was like, why? And I was like, well, I was diagnosed with HIV, Pastor, and on top of that, I'm, 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 you know, labeled gay. You know, I, I don't think that's going to be accepted in this church. And I just opened up to him, and he said, "Brother Carter, you just confirmed you're the person that I need in this in this position." And it helped the church to grow. And I think what he saw was your honesty and you know your heart. I think that's what he saw in that yes. moment. You know, yes. and um, I just had a thought, but you know, we we know that faith is a very you know personal thing. Uh, do you think that your time at you know this church really solidified or really laid a strong foundation for you know how your faith would play out uh, you know later on and the decisions that you would have to make throughout life? It, it did, and it allow me to open my perspective, broaden my horizon and see so many different layers of people, see so many um, layers of possibilities. And, and that's actually where I started my organization and I aligned it with the church and they will allow me to do talent shows there. And it was actually the very first talent show I did was at that particular church. So it, it really opened so many doors and it opened my eyes to so many things and just really helped me to grow. I kind of speak to, you know, a real desire, like really delve into that, the origins, what the motivation, kind of get into the org and really explain, you know, the origins of that. That it's so funny because the organ the organization was started by accident. <laughs> I would go to to casting calls and and something just was instilled into me. I don't have a, I didn't have an agent. I, I've never really had an agent. I've always been freelance. And I was like, you know, I don't have an agent, but I need to put something on my cards, my, my, my business cards that I designed as comp cards, miniature comp cards and my resume. I need to put something on here to, you know, inspire myself, encourage myself. And I just kept saying, I have a real desire. I'm going after everything that I want. I have a real desire. So I said, you know, that's 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 a very powerful, you know, sentence. The three little words, a real desire. So let me just make sure I just see that. As long as I see that, I don't know, affirmation. I don't know what you want to call it, but I put that on my card. And as, as I would go to these casting calls, and I said, oh, that's your agent? No, no, no. I would say, no, that's, that's not my agent. That's just something I have. It was like, oh, that looks like an agency. 
And I just kept hearing it over and over and over again. And then also by me sitting and waiting during these casting calls, I'm also sharing some of my personal experiences that I would have with some people sitting there. And it's like, this is very valuable information. You can charge people for this, you know? I was like, well, I'm not trying to charge people. I just want to see people successful like myself. I want to see people make it as well because it's more than enough for everybody. No, Mr. Carter, you should charge people. This this is, you know, this is very <laughs> valuable. You should charge people. So I was like, you know, how can I move forward without really focusing on making money from people? Because it's not my my goal to make money from people. It, it would be nice to, to, you know, have the the finances, you know, but at the same time, that's not my main focus. And God just kind of helped me to understand a real desire can also be a nonprofit organization. And as a nonprofit organization, you can help people without the worry and concern of making money off of them and you can benefit as well. So I just started learning how to to grow and, and create things with a real desire, showing people how they can also see their desire and ask them, ask, they can ask themselves, do I have a real desire? So that's where the motto came in, a real desire. Do you have it? Wow. And do you have any idea to this point, like how many artists have been, you know, developed and really like positively impacted by your work at this point? I don't have an actual uh, uh, account, but I know I've, I've done my best. Sometimes I'm helping people and they won't tell me that I'm helping them. Um, sometimes they will. They'll send me a message in my in my you know DMs. But I do my best to just uh, make myself an open book. And uh, I haven't had a talent show in a while. The last one I had was 2015, which I got to get back to. But recently, with the with the film that I just created, I've had so many of the actors come and let me know this is my first time in the project, and you just really helped me to secure my um, my courage. And you, you really have really helped put me, you know, in places that I wished I could be. And you've done so much for me. And it, and it was things that I've heard from these people that I didn't know I was doing for them. But I'm very grateful to God that I was able to, because it is definitely one of the things and some of the things I want to do. And is there one like story that really sticks out that really like really hits at the heart for you in terms of artists have come through your organization? I know it was one young lady named Sonia, Sonia Collin, and she was letting me know because of her age that a lot of people didn't want to give her an opportunity. They didn't even give her the chance, you know, simply because of that. And because I simply allowed her to be in the fashion show, it gave her so much courage to face so many things. And she would cry to me and say, you have done so much for me. You have restored my faith and my courage and my talent and my dream. And her story is, is a really amazing story. So that's that's definitely amazing. Like to especially to enliven that in you know someone who's older. I know that you know it's really hard to do that for someone who feels like they're kind of past their best, and you know they don't really see much that's going to come from it. Now, yes. you, I, I want to kind of really delve into your story at this point, and you know this is you know as I said to you before that your story really encouraged me. Uh, because I've been in situations not even close to what, you know, you've been through and been like significantly discouraged, you know. And, you know, you share that after being told by your doctor that you were going to die of AIDS, that you said, I decided that I will not die, but live. And I will help who I can, when I can, while I can, before God calls me home. Now, faith in God and faith in God is very important to you in. How were you able to tap into such a strong faith, you know, with these circumstances? Well, it first starts, it goes back to my childhood. Uh, and I mentioned that I stopped going to the church that I was attending, but because of, just because I stopped going to the church, I didn't stop having a relationship with God. So I was able to build a personal relationship with God and get a lot more understanding. And I was told as a child not to question God, but I still questioned him anyway. Because for me, is is you can't get a, an answer to something if you don't ask the question, which makes no sense to me to not question the source of <laughs> the, the the person or the the, the question that, that you're that you're wanting to know. And he really just showed me so many different things through that journey, um, through my journey as a child, 
up into my adulthood. And it just allowed me to just, just understand and believe who he was, despite of what other people were saying. And so when the doctor said what he said to me, I would just relay and just remember the stories in the Bible that I read about that I also personally experienced. And I just had an understanding if he did it then, he could still do it now. <laughs> so when the doctor said what he said to me, I said, I, I, I hear what you're saying and you're going by science, but I understand there's another level beyond science and I'm going to apply that to my life as well. So you do what you need to do and I'm going to do what I need to do. And I'm going to trust the God that I serve and believe in. And he made things happen for me to the fact that doctor had to quit his job and go do research to figure out how things happened for me. Wow. Wow. That's, wow. That's really inspiring. That's, oh man. And I can see that's, you know, even to this day, how many years ago that was, I can see how personally you still, you know, you still feel it like yes. those was brand new. And, you know, for, for those listening, like I, I couldn't even begin to to try to even think in that train of thought at that moment, just hearing that news. Like I remember a couple of years ago, I um, this doctor was telling me, and it was a misdiagnosis that I had like like this, this osteochondroma, which is a thing that develops in the foot or the bones. And they were saying it was some type of cancer and that it, the doctor realized that it was a misdiagnosis. I had no cancer at all uh, in the foot. And I remember just feeling that like discouragement, like right away, kind of despondent. <laughs> and it wow. wasn't and like the osteochondromas are not really, they're not really known to be fatal. Uh, they're just mm -hmm. known to be, you know, problematic uh, pain wise. But other than that, so just to hear you, you know, have that diagnosis, hear that and be able to like really rely on God, especially in a time where, you know, we're kind of told to like, you know, hold on to science, you know, don't hold on to, to God. And, and not to say that science and God are in conflict. I think the two things, you know, definitely can go together very yes. well. Uh, and unfortunately we're, we're told that they have to be separate. I, I don't think they have to be, you know, no. and, and that's one thing when I share on my social media platforms with other people, I let people know everything works together, mind, body, and spirit. I mean, we talk about that in, in life, mind, body, and spirit. The spirit is the soul. The spirit is the connection and the, the spiritual relationship you have with the, the God. If you do serve or believe in God mm -hmm. and allow everything to connect so you can be a whole being. That's, that's what I firmly believe. And I know from experience. And of course it took, some of the things I saw my mom do, um, that that's one of some of the things that helped me to, you know, build my relationship with God on my personal level. But of course, hearing the news initially, I was distraught. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I got distraught because I caught my ex cheating on me and I went and got tested and I got the news mm -hmm. and I I flipped out. Wow. And I questioned God on that level. Why me? Why me? Why? Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm being faithful. I'm doing my best. And, and I heard him as clear as day. Why not you? Mm -hmm. I'm like, what do you mean? Because I know you will not throw me away. I know you will not go back on like your word like some other people do when they get bad news. You still have mm -hmm. faith despite the bad news you get. You're still going to let people know about the good despite the bad news you get. So I know it's unfortunate, but I want to use you. Mm -hmm. That's why you. So stop speaking life, stop speaking death into your life. Cause I was like, you gave me this mark of death. Cause that's what we would call it in Florida. Oh, mm -hmm. it's the kiss of death. It's, it's the death mm -hmm. sentence. And I was like, and he said, stop saying that. You're speaking yeah. death into your existence. Speak life into your mm -hmm. existence and you will live. This is not yeah. the end of you. And it has literally been a platform to help other people deal with the same situation so they can understand that your tongue speaks life into existence it speaks whatever into your existence so if you want to speak death it's going to you know cause death but don't speak death into your existence speak life despite yeah. your diagnosis and since that diagnosis how many years has it been since since the diagnosis oh my gosh it's, it's almost 20 years now because it happened wow. in 2007. wow wow no, that's amazing and you know i was watching the the you know war angel the awakening and i just love how 
you know, you play out the, with the good forces and the evil forces. And, you know, it's just interesting to hear, you know, how the good forces are saying, well, he's covered, you know, and then the evil forces are saying, you know, like, well, we have to like really work and try to figure out like what's going on because he's covered. And, you know, I love the fact that you put that in the film because there's an extent to which, you know, people with your diagnosis and the way that you identify will say, well, there's no way that he's covered by God. You know, like there's like the things he's doing, what he's going through in life. There is no way that he's covered. And I like the fact that that you put that in there to show that, you no, know, God is is working through everyone and is, you know, trying to work with everyone. And, and so, you know, kind of speak to your, I guess, your mindset in particularly that part of the film. And I guess as you were playing it, you know, going through the, the, the storyline and trying to really bring a strong message out. Well, that was one of the, 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 the strong messages that God wanted to make sure that I put as part of the film. That was one of the reasons for the story to let people know just because you're gay, just because you're, you're diagnosed with HIV or AIDS, just because you're diagnosed with whatever you've been diagnosed with, that is not your punishment. Despite some of these people in the churches are telling you, oh, you're being punished because you're gay. That means you're going to hell. No, that does not mean that. That just means that you you are unfortunately in a situation because somebody mean, conniving, probably tried to control you or because that was one of the ways my ex was trying to control me and keep me by giving me HIV. And unfortunately, we meet some people who don't believe in God or, you know, you got a lot of people that serve a lot of different things out here. So it's, it's, it's just important for us to understand God still loves us. You know, and it's still you still are able to build a relationship with him if you want to. You still have the opportunity to to, to do that. And I want the people in the church who are doing that to stop. Stop telling people they're going to hell because they're gay. Stop telling people they're going to hell or that their their diagnosis is a sickness because of them being gay. That is not a gay disease. Everybody can have or contract it if they don't practice safe sex or if they're not careful. Be aware of who you have in your in your circle, in your environment, in your atmosphere, and just do your best to take care of yourself. If it does happen to you, understand that you are still loved, but you, you have to understand that for yourself and move forward in a positive direction. Yeah. And, you know, it's interesting. The one thing that's kind of coming out to me um, as you're saying this is that it seems like a person's perception of God, like a perception of the type of person that God is can really have either a negative or a positive impact on their mental health. Yes. Yes. And that's again, where the mind, body and spirit comes into play because you have to really understand it in your mind to even move forward spiritually, because I, I have a guy that I'm trying to mentor to who's dealing with, you know, a mental illness. And I let him know when I do get a chance to talk to him, we have to do our best to exercise our mind and understand it in our mind first, because if things happen on a spiritual level, you're not going to understand it if you don't be, if you're not able to, you know, process it in your mind, you know, then there are certain things that you can't process. And if you try to over process it, <laughs> as opposed to just saying, okay, I know where it came from and just let it be that, then you're going to drive yourself crazy even worse. So, yeah, your mind definitely plays a major part with understanding what's going on and then understanding sometimes it's a spiritual fight, sometimes it's a physical fight, and sometimes it's a mental fight. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons I wanted to talk to you because, you know, on the I Choose Health podcast, you know, we, we want to really stress that health is way more than how you eat and how you exercise. The real, I think we kind of laid the foundation last week was that the foundation of your health really starts in the mind. And if that's not strong, then everything else is going to be weak, you know? And so I really want to talk to you today because as you're able to have such a healthy mindset to deal with your challenges, to be like, okay, this is a challenge and God has made me strong enough to deal with these challenges, right? Yes. And, and so that's something that we... I think it's really important to explore. And this is why I wanted our audience to hear your experience and to hear how 
your mind was continually fortified throughout this time and it still continues to be fortified to now, you know, because you deal every day we're dealing with setbacks and challenges, but you're still maintaining, you know, your faith. Oh, most definitely. Like tomorrow, I have to go and do an x-ray tomorrow because my doctor, she's like doing some, you know, exams. She's looking at my ribs and she said, that looks like that was a broken rib and it healed wrong. Did something happen to you? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, when I was in college, 18, 19 years old in Daytona Beach, I was attacked by like 100 people. She said, what? And you survived? <laughs> I said, yeah, apparently. Um, it was a lot that happened that that night that a lot of people can't explain. Um, and so as my mind is processing a lot of things I survived that a lot of other people didn't, it's, it's, it's doing something to get me to understand a lot. Um, also, uh, in my mind, understanding the reason why I want to physically be, be healthy. Uh, I, I push myself so hard. So the diagnosis, I let people know, um, just because you're diagnosed with something doesn't mean you have to look a certain way because I'm, I'm, unfortunately people think when you're diagnosed with HIV, you have to look a certain way and that's not the case. So I like to show that with my physical fitness as well. Um, and then on top of that being over the age of 40. So I joke about that with a lot of people. I say, I'm over 40, but my knees still work. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. And you know, it's interesting. I, I was looking at, cause I'm a personal trainer. I was looking at your, you know, your photos. I'm like, man, Matthew's really looking good, man. And so I was just like, sometimes as a trainer, I'll see people with a better body than me. I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> but um, no, I just, I'm just, it, I, for me, it's it's a competition. I've, I've been very competitive since elementary, and I'm uh, competing against HIV because I do understand some of the things um, and the side effects for it. Like, for instance, one of the things we have in HIV. Um, it is a possibility of uh, called uh, body fat morphing, which means the body mm. fat on your body can move from one spot to another. But I tell myself, you know, if I exercise hard enough and get rid of the body fat, it can't morph because it's gone. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, man. So it makes me push myself a little harder. And at the same time, I'm having fun, too. So I see it as dancing and not just exercising. Well, that's amazing. Now, I think, you know, going through your resume and seeing some of the films, right? You've been in Being Mary Jane, uh, Deadpool, Kill the Messenger, you know, Fast and Furious 7, and 42. And in these roles, you stood alongside some legendary actors. Now, in 42, you got to see the amazing Chavit Bozeman at work. And, you know, we lost him way too soon uh, in 2020. And this happens to be also the same time that you released around that time, the War Angel, the Awakening. Uh, can you speak about how inspiring uh, was Chadwick's, I guess, his work and what he went through and the way that he went through it uh, with many of us uh, not knowing his diagnosis um, and the roles that he played in that time, uh, just dealing with that, that illness um, and still showed a strong faith a strong front, like how much was that really a, uh, an inspiration to you and, and the work you did? It was a huge inspiration um, because in 42, I almost had the opportunity to be one of the baseball players that he was um, on the team that he was playing on. And um, they ended up not needing me. So they just made me an extra, but I got the chance to still actually talk with him and found out that that was his first breakout role, according to the producers on the, on the project. And, just thinking about him is because I feel so many connections with Chadwick because that was his first breakout role. That was my first time being in a movie period as well. So I felt a lot of first happening with Chadwick and you just brought it to my attention because I didn't realize um, that War Into the Awakening um, was released the same time, you know, with, with that happening with him. So that's another connection that I'm realizing. But I just was so connected with him spiritually. I just feel like there's a kindred spirit between him and I because I'm noticing there are a lot of things. He he inspired me so many ways with, with his work and I enjoy watching him and just people like him are are, are, are the reasons why I do what I do and continue to move forward because they they rejuvenate me. 
you know, sometimes people who are doing the work also need to be poured into. And just thinking about the things he's done and, and, and talking with him again, like I said, on 42 and watching his journey, it pours into me and it rejuvenates me to continue moving forward. I just like him, like you in your work, your roles, like especially with War Angel, like as a black man, you know, you've see you we see you in a positive light. And, you know, we see how Chadwick played these legendary roles of people who, you know, we highly esteem. And so, you know, not to I mean, obviously we have a lot of fun films out there, but it always spoke to me, especially as a kid, to watch films with you know, especially the true stories of strong black characters who, per, you know, yes. persevere through tough times, whether it's racism or an illness. And, you know, I, I, I see the same parallel with you in terms of just bringing out that strength and that, you know, uh, faith in the work that you do. And I do. And, and one thing I would say that that's a little opposite that I've noticed with Chadwick and I is he fought his battle with cancer privately. He fought his battle with his diagnosis privately. I'm fighting it publicly publicly because I want people to also, as you said, I want them to know. Again, I think I did already said it, just because you have this diagnosis, don't let it stop you. I know it's gonna be a little harder for me because you have some people with the mindset of, oh, I don't wanna be next to this person who got this. I don't wanna do a scene with this person that got that. But I think when we're able to actually achieve a scene with somebody who will, it allows other people to understand it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. So we can actually kind of dissolve the mindset of what some people are having on a negative level and, and help them to understand it's okay, which is another reason why I use the hashtags HIV and me. And I am not a statistic because just because of what you think I am doesn't mean that I'm going to be in that category. Now, we want to definitely take this time because we're winding down, we're close to the end of the show, but we want to really give you this time to, you know, let the audience know what you're working on, really plug that here, what's going on with your org, really let us know, you know, what's next. What's next right now, I, um, as you know, I self-published the books. I don't know if you um, actually knew that or not, but War Angel, The Awakening and War Angel, Inner Demons, I actually self-published the, the novels and they're available on Amazon and a few other platforms. War Angel, The Awakening was the first part of the story, which is the one you've seen on YouTube that I put out there for people to watch. And War Angel, Inner Demons is, I'm, I'm working on it to be a mini series, but I'm editing it. We, we shot it in Atlanta, 2022. Um, and I'm editing everything right now um, myself and uh, getting it together for the premiere that I'm gonna actually showcase in Atlanta. Planning on doing that in 2024 and let that circulate through the film festival circuit to, to share the story, hopefully get picked up by a major, major, mm -hmm. uh, major brand. So we brand continue the story. Yeah, because I got a whole universe that I'm ready to create and share kind of like the Marvel and DC universe. I want to create the War mm -hmm. Angel universe and share my stories because I got so much to share as nice. far as what I've experienced. And as you know, with the War Angel universe, I combine things I've been through physically. Mm -hmm. uh, the visions that I've had and the experiences that I've had spiritually. And I just put everything on one plane, which is where the superhero uh, was born. Nice. And where can we find you in terms of like socials? You can definitely find me on Instagram, uh, War Angel Reborn. Uh, I'm on Facebook, Matthew Carter, also War. And uh, for those who don't know, War is my industry name. It's the hyphen for War Angel Reborn. Uh -huh. That's why you got periods after each letter, W-A-R. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I I was gonna actually contact you because I went on the IMDb and I saw War. I'm like, should I say Matthew or should I should I say War? I'm transitioning because that's my industry name. So you know how some of these celebrities got their industry name and then they have their their government name. So uh, War is my industry name, um, and I'm just doing <laughs> my, you know doing what I can to transition it to to using that a lot more. And yeah, I mean, that's War Angel Inner Demons. It's been very tedious because I've teach mm -hmm. myself how to do a lot because a lot of people are coming at me for the wrong reasons to, to help mm -hmm. me with the project. But I need to make sure the right energy is being put into this project because again, what I do is not for me. You know, mm -hmm. what I do is to hopefully inspire, help other people so they can get strong enough to deal with their demons and, and you know, mm -hmm. come out on top because 
even if they're not aware, even if they don't want to believe it, this battle is more than a physical battle in life. Mm -hmm. And some of us have to sometimes fight for other people who are not aware of what they're being attacked by and to ensure they're safe and, 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 and secure. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah. We got to do what we got to do. And as you say, you know, like I think scripture says, like, we war not against flesh or blood, but, you know, principalities and powers. Yeah. So it's like, I think that's one thing we need to recognize. And sometimes even like the lies we tell ourselves about ourselves saying that, you know, this is what we're limited to. You know, we can't go beyond that. Like those are things that, you know, kind of act as principalities and powers against us, you know, keeping us from actually realizing our potential. Yeah. And as you said, with, with what I with what I quoted, I'll do what I can, when I can, while I can. That even applies to me creating this project. I may not have the money that these major um, you know, companies have, but I'm going to do what I can with what I have as best as possible. Oh, that's amazing. Well, guys, we had another good one today with Matthew. I really enjoyed our time with him the insights that he shared, his strong faith. And I hope that you guys are able to really hold on to something here where, you know, you are going to really make health personal and, you know, really make it personal about uh, working on your mental health and, and where, you know, who you are going to choose to be uh, regardless of the circumstances that come your way. And that this is one thing that I've learned from this interview is that mm -hmm. we don't have the final say, right? We don't we don't have the final say in the sense of when something is presented to us, we can say, you know what, we can I can go beyond that, I can go above that. And so I hope that this one is truly really, uh, of great value to you. And I want you guys to make health personal. Make a choice to be you. This is again the I Choose Health podcast. Hope you guys have a great one.